Alright, hello everyone and welcome back to Cutabo Space Program, where today, uh, today's kind of going to be a little bit of a two-parter episode. After the oh, horrible, horrible tragedy that befell us in the previous episode with our, uh, oh god, who, who did I lose? Jedcan, poor, poor Jedcan, accidentally going on EVA while re-entering the atmosphere, we we have lost our first Kerbal in this career mode, and it saddens me, but but we have learned, we have learned from this horrible tragedy, and I have gone and downloaded the EVA Parachutes mod by Vanguard Technologies. Now it actually does add something to the tech tree here for survivability. It adds this VNG PB parachute box. This is the latest in parachute transporting. Doesn't mean that it contains the latest parachutes though. It contains fun parachutes which cannot be repacked into the box. You also never find them again if you take them with you into the spacecraft, so use them wisely. Okay, so yes, it adds this wonderful box for parachutes that you can add to the side of your ship. I don't actually like that portion of it though. There's also a uh, additional plugin on the forums that makes it so your Kerbals have a parachute on by default, which is much nicer because especially on something like with poor Jedcan, he wouldn't have been able to exit the you know, the command capsule and grab a parachute before he fell to his imminent death. No, no my friends, he just would have fallen to his imminent death. So I downloaded that extra little plugin that was on the a forum for the Vanguard Parachute plugin, and it gives my Kerbals a by default parachute on them whenever they leave the capsule. So that that hopefully should save a future loss of life. Though also since the last episode, I've been doing a bit more science. I completely finished up that mission that we sent up last time. And I'm actually a little bit disappointed in how the science went for that. In total, I think I got like 80 or 90 science in total out of all five of the capsules bringing them home. Which isn't exactly rolling in the science there now, is it? So, uh, I, uh, I don't know, we're gonna have to try some other things. But I was able to get the flight control researched. Tumbling out of control may be fun, but our engineers insist there's more to rocket science than that, which gave us this wonderful Stay Putnik Mark 1. Because that is going to be part two of today. We are going to put up our first unmanned satellite that can just sit up in space and do science. Granted, as we've learned, science in the same orbit or same area has a uh, diminishing returns. But nonetheless, nonetheless, I would like to put up a science satellite for long-term, quote-unquote, uh, research. So that should be interesting, hopefully. And it unlocked these two aerodynamics, uh, which give us a lot of cool stuff for making planes. And then also advanced flight controls, which give us uh, more stuff for planes, a inline advanced stabilizer, and the probobidine octo, so we could have another unmanned thing. And I actually quite like that. I, I, I enjoy unmanned stuff, so yeah, it's all good. Uh, yeah, so now we have 28 science. We, we need to remedy that. Oh, I also have installed, but as you can see, I have no access to it yet. I have reinstalled the Interstellar mod, and from what I have seen on the forums, their stuff is way over here, requiring thousands of science to actually work with. Uh, so yeah, eventually, eventually we'll be back to the Interstellar things as well, have our nice little warp drive, it'll... It'll be cool. I like all these mods integrating themselves in with the science program. So, let's go to the VAB. And I'm gonna load up just a quick little thing I made to test out the parachutes, because I, I actually haven't tested it yet. I just uh, put it all in and, you know, watched a video on it, how it worked. And so I made this parachute test. It's a simple little rocket, just an SRB here at the bottom. And I made this kind of crappy platform out of girders because well, as you all know, the Kerbals don't always grab onto the ladder when they leave the capsule, so I want 
you know, uh, Jebediah is who I'm going to send on this, because who better to send on the first parachute mission than Jebediah? So I want him to exit the capsule, have a little platform he can kind of get his bearings on, then jump off and float gracefully back down to the planet. It'll be glorious, absolutely glorious. Though I actually think I'm gonna, I think the SRB may be overkill. Let's just add you and you, yeah, that should work. Get that out of the ground. Cause yeah, I think the SRB may take him up too high and I just wanna test the parachute. We're not actually trying to survive a horrific crash or, an, or a horrific accident like poor Jedcan. Oh, poor Jetcan. <laughs> but yeah, let's launch this and uh, try out this whole parachute MacGuffins. I would like to see what the boffins back at the R&D have thought up for us. So, Jebediah, are you ready, my friend? Let's turn on SAS, throttle up, and let's do it. Okay, now I don't need to go too high or too fast. I just want to get up to a decent enough altitude to have a good parachute test. So I may not even use all the fuel. I don't know. Hmm. Ah, what the heck. We're losing our fuel pretty quickly, so we shouldn't have much of an... Oh, you know what? Actually, let's shut it off. EVA. Oh, oh dear God. Uh, apparently, <laughs> apparently Jebediah is just kind of shoots up in the air, which is actually one thing that was weird last time with Jedcan. Apparently Jedcan is either far more aerodynamic or, uh, you know, far heavier than the capsule, because he just kind of shot past it towards the planet. So, uh, yeah, I don't know what Kerbals are made of, but they... <laughs> they apparently are made of some interesting materials. It's, oh, oh, geez, I'm kind of using my jetpack now to kind of bring me down a little, or at least slow my descent. And it's good. The, the actual parachute test ship is already well on its way back down to the ground and uh, Jebediah how are you doing in here he is enjoying himself let's do an EVA report just for the fun of it there we go this is a most precarious situation indeed it is and as you can see we've got the semi deploy parachute and fully deploy now apparently I don't know how, if it actually causes any damage or not but the parachute opening too quickly can you know create a lot of G's so there we go, semi-deploy. So, I, I don't know, maybe if you, whoa, hello, and boom. There we go, boom, excellent. So I don't know if you uh, fully deploy it and you're going too fast that maybe it'll hurt the Kerbal. I, I have no clue why there is the semi-deploy and fully deploy, but oh well. Let's uh, just bring this and nicely back down to the planet. Fully deploy now that we're getting close. Excellent. So, Really cool little square parachute. I actually quite like the design of that. That's cool. I have to. I may have to go look in the mod folders. I wonder if you can edit the texture for the parachutes. Might be interesting to make a Kodobos Games parachute. That'd be nice. But yeah, there we go. We are we are back on terra firma. Jibidai is nice and safe. Let's take a surface sample just to you know be thorough. This substance is what. And what makes the scientists yell at us when we go into the labs without cleaning our boots first? Very nice. Love it. Okay. I really do love all the descriptions for all the science stuff in the career mode. It's it's absolutely hilarious. I uh, When I finished up the last mission, I did land the final capsule with the mystery goo and the materials lab over in the desert. And it was great because it, uh, it came up when I took the last test that uh, apparently the... You know, sand got in all of the inside the materials lab, and we learned that it's not good to send sensitive scientific equipment to a desert. It was it was funny. I got a good laugh out of it. But yeah, Jebediah is back down safely on the planet. Oh, oh, he fell. He fell. Very very graceful, there, Jebediah. So yeah, let's let's just recover him. Get maybe a point of science out of the whole thing. And oh, point eight science. <laughs> wow. It's just, wow. <laughs> yeah, so back to the VAB, and let's do the second part of today's episode, which is really the important bit. I just wanted to show the parachute mod to go, hey, we're not gonna die horribly now if I accidentally hit EVA rather than IVA. <sighs> poor Jetcan, poor, poor Jetcan. Oh well, he will be remembered 
we shall not forget. So for the main mission, we're going to be playing with SciSat-1, our first scientific satellite. Now I use the same sort of setup we used for our previous orbital rockets, so that should be fine. And then I built this nice little satellite up top. We've got the Stay Putnik there, surrounded in solar panels so that we can, you know, keep getting a charge. Same down here, we've got four solar panels around the bottom. As, long, as well as four batteries, and then of course the Materials Lab, or the Science Junior, whatever you want to call it, the Mystery Goo, and I wanted to actually try out these new comms dishes. I haven't actually tried them yet, I haven't even loaded them onto the launch pad to open them up and see what they look like, so this will be cool. I can't wait to see what these look like, and I added them on each side since we don't have the retractable solar panels. I thought, hey, why not just add two weird comm arrays to each side of it? And so yeah, hopefully this will be able to produce some science for us. It won't be much uh, with how my last mission went with the same scientific equipment on board. But hey, what the heck. We'll have a satellite. It'll make me happy. So let's just save that and go for launch. This mission should hopefully go pretty smooth. Uh, considering that the Orbital 1 rocket design, which I did use the sub-assemblies for, I saved this bottom bit as a sub-assembly, which I'm quite happy. I love that new sub-assembly, but it's quite cool. There we go, let's launch that. Oh, it is spinning. I do not like how it is spinning. Oh, oh, that's not, that's not good at all. Hmm. Now, I remember it spinning on some of the other rockets, but... Uh, I thought I had it controlled finally, but apparently not. Apparently not. Okay, well, oh well, let's try and salvage this. I'm sure we can, and it should get better once we lose these. As those, since we don't have any struts yet, the SRBs tend to really sort of bend the ship around, though, wow, we are really flying in an erratic pattern now. <laughs> um... Okay, I need to stop this spin, but it's just not letting me. Okay, well, I was hoping to go on the 90. Let's see if we can still... We... Okay, let's... Okay, it looks like we're heading north. That's the direction we've been facing most often here. Oh, jeez. Okay, okay, well... <laughs> this... This rocket... Oh... I think I may need to go back to the drawing board with this. Oh god, oh, this thing is out of control. What in the world? It is just not wanting to cooperate. It's not wanting to control in the slightest. Why is my SAS actually continu- I'm not touching any keys right now, but it's saying on the SAS that I am. What in the world? Okay, something is dearly wrong with this mission right now. I don't know why it's saying that I'm pressing keys when I'm not. Let's try and... No? I was hoping that might reset some sort of key thing. But yeah, the SAS is stuck off saying that I'm moving things, but I'm touching nothing. And it's just going around and around. Let's... Launch that. Yeah, it's, it's stuck thinking that I'm rotating it around like that. That is not good. Let's actually head back to the vehicle assembly building real quickly. That is That was very, very strange. And let's add uh, some winglets on here. Yeah, let's add you to... Maybe this will help control it a bit better. There we go. And let's, let's try this launch one more time. I, I really don't know what was going on, though, with that. It just kept wanting to spin, thinking that I was pressing keys. Because, yeah, if you... The SAS thing, I like that indicator now that, you know, it kind of turns off when you press a key so you can move around. But it was stuck on, like that. Like I was pressing a key, even though I wasn't. I don't, I don't know what was going on there, but let's... Let's try launching this again. Alright, those winglets do appear to have helped. I should have added those in, in the first place, but oh well, live and learn, live and learn. So this is going much, much better. Oh, winglets always add some sort of stabilizing system. 
Oh, though, it's... Oh, it's getting harder to control now. And we are starting to spin a bit. But I seem to be able to control it this time. Let's... Okay, okay, let's... Let's angle down at the 90, start our gravity turn. Yeah, this one's going much better. Still, though, very, very sluggish. It's... Now not really wanting me to turn. Oh, nope, there we go. There we go. Got it finally to sort of move a bit more. That is extraordinarily sluggish now. Oh, no, stop rotating, you fool. Okay, okay. Oh, jeez, why? Ah, man, this thing is being a real pain to try and control here. I'm trying to send it one way, and it's just going entirely another way. I, I I really don't understand why this thing is controlling so poorly, and it's going out of control again. What in the world? I've never had this much trouble launching a rocket. Stop going that way. What are you doing? You are not listening to my controls. In the slightest. Okay, I am... What in the world is going on with this game right now? I, I'm... And it's back to that again. I'm not touching any keys, but it thinks I am. What in the world is this? I I don't know what to say or what to do <laughs> in this. I It thinks I'm pressing keys, but I'm not uh, at all. I mean, technically we're in space, but it's just... I have no control of the ship whatsoever. Because it keeps thinking I'm holding down a key when I, I am not doing anything of the sort. And so I have absolutely no control. Okay, I, I don't know what's going on, but I'm going to have to pause the recording here. And I, I don't know, I, I'm going to have to restart the game. I'll hopefully bring you guys back when I actually have this thing in orbit and it is successfully flying. Hi. Seriously, I'm not touching any keys, but it is thinking that I am, and I, I can't stop this spin that it's in. So yeah, I'll, I'll have to bring you guys back in a moment when I f hopefully figure out what's going on. Hopefully a restart of the game will help. <laughs> See you in a moment. Okay, and we are back. It took not only restarting Kerbal Space Program, but it still was giving me that issue where it was thinking I was pressing a button, but wasn't. So I had to also restart my computer entirely, then open the game again. And finally, that got it working, as well as a slight redesign once uh, I did all that. Uh, you know, I launched it up and it was it had balancing problems then, so I added some nose, or some uh, cones to the top of the asparagus tanks that we released off about halfway through and also took off the mystery goo. The mystery goo kept weighing it northwards and I didn't want a polar satellite so I took off the mystery goo. So all we have is now the science junior. Let's rotate ourselves around and that's it. <laughs> <laughs> oh well, oh well, even with the mystery goo, it wouldn't have been that great of a science satellite anyways. I just want this thing in space so that we do have a science satellite in space. So yes, if I hit 2 on my action group, that will bring this up. Microgravity has greatly affected the growth of crystalline structure, yeah, structures, blah blah blah, we've seen that before, keep the data. And then with 3, I can close it back up again to reset it. And with 1... I can open up our comm arrays. Let's see what those look like. Oh, those are actually really cool looking. This is actually the best part, I think. <laughs> We've got the cool comms arrays and it's all good. So we can retract, transmit, same old, same old. Of course, we can't do any sort of crew report with a uh, <laughs> unmanned capsule. Would have been interesting if you could, though. A quick computer report. But, oh well, we finally got this thing up here. It was a bit of an ordeal. I, I still have no idea what in the world was going on with Kerbal Space Program earlier. Uh, it just, it kept thinking I was hitting buttons that I clearly was not. But, oh well, we now have our satellite up. 
with a little bit less scientific equipment than I would have liked, but uh, c'est la vie, that's how the dice came out on this one. So we'll just have to make do, but like I said, with the whole diminishing return of science in the same spot, uh, it really wouldn't have made much of a difference, I don't think. I mean, let's just transmit this stuff, and ooh, hold on, I gotta actually turn that back on. Let's transmit, and we'll get a little bit of science. Oh, done? Done? Did I retract? Uh... Huh. Let's transmit. Wait, what? What in the world? It said done, but it... What? <laughs> why, why did it retract the com array after... Oh, and now why is that only opening one of them? What in the world is going on with this? So, observe the bay. And let's just transmit the science from here. Okay, well that worked. Though that's still... Ooh, 1.4 science added. Yay! And what... Why? Why does it close after it sends? That's... That's strange. I, I don't like that. I like you open. <laughs> Aesthetics, my friend. Aesthetics. They're far more important than your... Well, I don't know why you'd be closing. That seems a little strange. But oh well. <laughs> oh well. That's... That's gonna be it. Kind of a... Kind of an interesting episode today. We had the random parachuting with Jebediah. I'm sure he enjoyed that. Uh, you know, we we had to do something though after poor Jed Can's accident. We we couldn't let that stand. And after much finicking around and restarting my computer and the game, we were finally able to get this satellite up. And well, actually, where am I or orbiting? Kind of a high orbit too, at 173 and 165 kilometers up. So pretty high, pretty high. But, and kind of wonky as well, that's not exactly on the 90. Oh man, I, didn't, I do not know what went wrong with that rocket. I mean, we had not had that many issues with a rocket in a very, very long time. But, oh well. <laughs> So yeah, that's gonna be it. I hope you all did enjoy this episode, and of course that you come back for the next, where we will be doing something else. I'll probably try and get a lot of science on my own over the weekend, so we can open up a few other bits of the tech tree. I don't know, maybe get some more scientific equipment or something along those lines. I'd actually like to get, I think, the wheels next, so I can actually make a little plane, because I would like to go over to the, uh island base. I haven't seen what the new base looks like yet, because apparently they revamped all that. So perhaps we'll have that for our next episode. I don't know. We'll see. But until then, thank you for watching, my friends, and as always, have a good one.